Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen today. Uh, my name is Otis Alexander. I'm a cybersecurity engineer um, at MITRE, and I lead the effort for attack evaluations for ICS. Uh, so today I'll be talking about uh, the importance of detection context uh, in regard to our recently released results uh, for MITRE Ingenuity's attack evaluations for ICS. So just as background, uh, this is attack evaluation's first uh, move into a new evaluation domain, uh, industrial control systems. And we just completed our first round of independent evaluations for ICS and the results were released uh, last month on the 19th. So the evaluations examined how cybersecurity products from five vendors or ICS vendors, Armis, Clarity, Dragos, III, and Microsoft uh, were able to detect TTP associated with the Triton malware. So just as background for attack evaluations, our goals are to improve organizations against known adversary behavior by first empowering end users with objective insights so they know how to use the participating uh, products uh, providing transparency around the true capabilities of these products and driving vendors to really enhance their capabilities. So it's important to note that these evaluations uh, don't result in a winner. We're not declaring a winner. Uh, they're not meant to be a competitive analysis. We're simply documenting what we observed in regard to detections and it's just important uh, to remember across vendors, there's no singular way that you know we know of of analyzing ranking or rating solutions. So we look at how each vendor approaches threat defense within the context of attack. So for this adversary emulation that we did for uh, this evaluation, we were emulating TTP associated with uh, the well-known Trident attack. Uh, and we launched our adversary emulation against an evaluation environment uh, that is our lab, which functions as a burner management system. So we launched 100 sub steps against that environment. And the real goal of this was um, to disable safety functions and to allow for unsafe state to be induced. So the unsafe state that we were trying to induce in this burner management system was uh, a release of gas without the system tripping at all. And once we got enough gas in the simulated facility, uh, we went ahead and ignited that gas to cause uh, destruction to the infrastructure. So it's important to note here that many of the things that we did were just standard actions that were uh, leveraged against the environment. Uh, the adversary emulation consisted of a lot of uh, remote access um, actions. It also, from the ICS perspective, it, it uh, consisted of like status requests to PLCs or online edits to change configurations of PLCs or even forcing points to try to drive the process into a bad state. So if you wanna learn more about what we did, I encourage you to go to the attack eval site to look at our operational flow and we'll go through the individual steps. So each vendor uh, that was participating sent us a physical appliance uh, with their solution installed on it for us to, to install in our lab. And they all received network traffic, was, which was distributed to them by a network aggregator. Uh, in addition, uh, Windows event logs were centrally collected and then forwarded via syslog to any of the vendors that um, had the capability to collect those with the appliance that they sent to us. Uh, we also offered the opportunity to actively pull the PLCs for configuration changes. This is a feature that some of the vendors have, and we wanted to see how it worked. So for those that offer that to their customer base, we offered the chance to do that 
but at the end of execution so that uh, that traffic to the PLCs didn't interfere with the network traffic going to everybody else. So important concept is uh, detection categories. And it's important because each of these vendors has their own way of describing uh, detections. They have their own uh, windows in their UI uh, where they collect these things and maybe called you know, alerting window or detection window or even uh, notifications or something like that. It also a lot of times have a back end uh, which collects a lot of the atomic data that's being parsed um, from the particular uh, collector or data source that, that um, they're ingesting. So um, it's important for us to be able to abstract that data so that we can talk to, about it in a similar way across the vendors. And that's really what detection categories are. So across the top, we have our uh, main detections. Uh, NA just means that the particular participant didn't have a solution to collect a particular data source, so we just write NA by that. Uh, none means that we didn't see any detection at all. Uh, telemetry is just minimally processed data with, you know, little to no context associated with it. Uh, general tactic and technique represent context that the vendor uh, product has added to uh, the detection to kind of talk about why it's malicious. Uh, we also will include two modifiers, which are config change and correlation. So config change is um, added to a detection or to a point in time to show that the uh, vendor made a change to their product. So they have to come to us and let us know what that change is. And if we approve it, then we'll add that to that particular sub-step um, that it corresponds with. Correlation, uh, which is going to be an important topic coming up, is uh, added to a detection to show that um, a detection was associated with another detection or other data that had been seen. Uh, and this can add more context to a detection so that you can better understand surrounding events. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, let's talk about how we can add more core, um, context to particular detections by leveraging correlation and even leveraging correlation across data sources. So like I said before, uh, when we were talking about the adversary emulation, this was built off of a lot of standard actions. And these actions are not malicious on their own. You really have to provide context to them to understand that they're malicious. So RDP, SSH, SFTP, if there's things that you do in your environment, those are just standard actions that happen. Uh, status request in, in regard to uh, the SIP protocol or online edits or force points or you know, the standard actions that you see uh, in control systems are um, not malicious in and of themselves. Uh, so it's important to add context to them so that analysts can understand that this is something that really needs to be looked at or um, responded to. So to prove that an action is bad, uh, we really need to show something else, some, some other context. We need to give some more information. So uh, maybe it's that this particular action will negatively impact the control system, or it should not have been performed uh, at a particular time or by a particular person or at all in this environment. Or, you know, another thing that we can do is we can use correlation or tie it to some other malicious activity that it's related to. And therefore, we have more context uh, about it maybe potentially being bad. So what we're really looking for is a more holistic view of detections. Uh, what we see a lot is telemetry and singular analytic detections. 
uh, which all increase visibility in an environment, but alone, they don't always provide enough context for ants to know that they're bad or, or that they should be investigated. Um, so correlation can be really used to tie together these standard actions to malicious ones. So during um, the execution and while we were uh, collecting evidence and processing results, we did see correlation. We saw um, correlation in uh, regard to singular data sources. So um, Windows events or network traffic, but not both at the same time. So just to give you some examples of things that we saw, uh, we saw Windows host space data sources, uh, which were tied to related events um, associated with the execution of malicious programs, uh, usually consolidated to a single asset, something that happened on one asset. So this was good because what it did was it built a bigger story around a single action so that we saw related events and we got more context of what happened over a particular time period or uh, how a parent process logs under other processes and you know a tree structure of events so that we as an analyst can uh, really understand a, a sequence of events. Uh, the other thing that we saw were events pulled together in a, a story format, more of a, a, a narrative talking about um, uh, network sessions that may relate to each other or um, other information that provided root cause analysis to really explain why something may have been happening. Both of these are great examples of correlation over a single data source. But what we wanted to see is more narrative about what was happening across data sources to really tie some of this stuff together so that we had more context as an analyst. So I provided a couple of examples of uh, things that we could potentially do to provide more correlation across data sources. So if you look at our adversary emulation, it's broken out into sub-steps. And each sub-step has some criteria, something that we're looking for in terms of the detection uh, to say that this is related. This uh, will count as evidence of this particular step of adversary emulation. So some of our sub-steps are related together, uh, and it's usually in, in terms of numbering, but overall it's a, a similar action. So for instance, 4B1 and 4B2 are, uh, and 4, 4C1 are all pretty much a similar goal of the adversary, or sim similar action. Um, 4B1 is evidence that the executable SMB client uh, is not legitimate. So uh, this particular executable is masquerading as something related to SMB, but is truly not. Um, and 4B2 is evidence of an established network connection over TCP port 445. Uh, between the adversary machine and the control engineering workstation. And this is an outbound SSH tunnel uh, request through the firewall. And um, what, what we see here is the SMB client is actually Plink under the hood, and it's creating this outbound SSH uh, request. And then 4C is evidence of an established network connection over TCP port 3389. Uh, between the adversary machine and the control EWS. So if we look at all of these uh, sub-steps, what we see is that they have uh, differing data sources. So the first one is uh, we're looking for a Windows event. Uh, the next one, we're looking at network traffic for evidence of a network session. And then the third one, we're looking for a Windows event again. So what we kind of saw is like for 4B1, we may see an alert that talks about masquerading and uh, may tie together 
certain processes uh, that are related to each other to, to correlate and, and kind of tell a story about how these processes were being executed. But what we did see is the Windows event related to the network traffic. So on the right hand side, what we have is, you know, it, it's a, a narrative, but it's something that we would like to see in terms of correlation across the data sources to, to kind of tell a narrative. So it states behavior was observed indicating network restriction bypass through RDP tunneling based on the executable SMB client that execute masquerading as plink that execute being used to create an SSH tunnel over port 445. So we don't expect this exact, um, you know, sentence to be stated within a particular platform, but something that uh, leverages information from all three of these sub steps uh, to correlate it into some coherent story or tie it together so that the analyst knows that these things are related and that these standard actions are tied to something malicious, in this case, uh, masquerading for SMB client. So I have another example here of uh, SIP communication and uh, correlation across uh, these types of events. So these span across sub-steps 19B1, 20A1, and 20A2. So 20, uh, 19B1 is evidence that a newly created, uh, new, newly created files from a zip that are, have been extracted into the temp directory are not legitimate. So now we're kind of dealing with this whole masquerading again. And then 20A1 is evidence that RS logic 5000 that execute, which was recently uh, extracted from this uh, zip, uh, was executed on the safety engineering workstation. And this may also include uh, things like their uh, parameters associated with this particular executable and things like that. 20A2 is evidence of an adversary initiated get attribute single SIP request for the status attribute associated with a PLC. So again, we have three separate sub steps with their own criteria and they have differing data sources on um, the middle column here. So the first one's associated with Windows events as is the second one but the third one is network traffic that we may be uh, looking for. So again, we saw uh, correlation for Windows events associated with mask rating or scripting and different things like that. We saw event trees being created or events being tied together based on certain criteria. But what we did see is Windows events related to network traffic. So on the right hand side, again, we have uh, correlation across the data sources and what we could, uh, would expect to see in terms of tying together these events. So behavior was observed indicating that a newly created file, RS Logix 5000, is masquerading as an Allen Bradley executable and, it, and issued a SIP request for status attribute over the network. So now, we have this standard action again uh, that we may see in an environment a lot, this SIP request for uh, a status attribute for the PLC, uh, which may or may not be malicious, we don't know, but combined with something that relates in time or some other criteria to this newly created file that's masquerading as an Allen Bradley file, um, now we can kind of build a story about why this may be malicious and it takes on a whole new meaning to an analyst looking at the screen. So by leveraging these different data sources and tying to them together, we can actually tell a better story about why standard actions may warrant some more investigation. So this really is our call to vendors. Uh, it's, you know, provide more context uh, to some of these detections. We saw a, a lot of uh, good context uh, provided in regards to singer, singular analytic detections. We saw 
correlation across singular data sources, uh, but we didn't see um, the ability uh, to leverage approaches to correlate detections across multiple data sources. So we gave some examples of host-based and network-based um, data sources, but also PLC-based uh, data sources. So that's the capability of your platform to actively pull uh, PLCs to get configuration information. Maybe all these things could be correlated in some form or fashion to tell a bigger story about what's going on uh, in these environments. So this will not only improve the analyst's understanding of the activity, but it'll also help um, you know, make sense of standard actions that may uh, go ignored or be misunderstood in these environments without more context. And it really defines why a standard action uh, may be malicious. So um, we encourage vendors to, to see how you can leverage a correlation across these data sources and provide more context to uh, analysts. And for those who are looking at the results, we encourage you to really dig deep into them to understand uh, how these um, vendors are adding context to detections, um, what they're presenting to you as analysts in the context of this particular evaluation, because that's really important uh, to understand, you know, maybe what you will be wanting to look at as an analyst uh, versus um, you know, things that may or may not provide as much context. So we think it's very important to dig into the results to learn more. So that's all I have. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'll also be answering questions on Discord. So if you have any questions about the evals or process or some things that we learned, um, please join me there to, to, for a question to answer. So thank you.